don't count my money, by the way. So, you know, count yours, not mine. Right. And some, you know what? Sometimes the thing is, is that we, we do try different things. Because, like we do push the envelope, but we do it methodically, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, we're not just going to um, hope and pray because that's not a good business strategy. <laughs> no. We're doing it methodically. We know the num the number we're asking for is a little bit too high for you know what it is but if we're going for a um a homeowner like if you're putting it on the market and you're actually going for a homeowner we may be able to get that you know and a lot of times even our wholesale deals that we don't take down yeah you know for for the better part of my beginning of my career we used to buy everything yeah Clean, i'll put it on the mls well you know, COVID taught us how to be better, taught me how to be a better wholesaler, a right. true. And so putting it on the MLS when you're not the owner is a, is a technique that you have to be good at. Yep. Because when that agent's calling you going, well, you know, what is a wholesale deal? How come I can't, you just take sign off on my contract. So then you have to explain to them why. Yeah. That your contract started the ball, but here's the doc you need to sign. And here's what's happening and that it has to be cash. Got it. Well, why is that to be cash? Well, let me tell you why. Um, there is a high level technique to get a mortgage buyer into that. And that could be a, you know, we can talk about that if you'd like. Um, but generally when you, when you put it on the MLS, you got to tell the agent that you have what we call equitable interest. Yep. Right. You need to do that otherwise, because you can't represent the, the fact that you're this, that you're working for the seller because you are not right the fiduciary is to yourself so you have to that agent needs to know that that they're negotiating with me as the agent or as the you know the contract holder and that's what i'm selling and i am going to pay you your commission i'm going to do that because it's right. not less i have to yeah you're going to come down so i'm not cutting you out of the deal or the broker or anything I want and a to lot of and a lot of agents they're all they're concerned with is how am i going to get paid right for sure that's it yeah you and, know? And so i mean we all should be concerned how we're getting paid but at the yep. same time you know a, a, a realtor's fiduciary is not to themselves it's not to their paycheck yep. it's to that buyer and or seller i guess in this case it would be the buyer my fiduciary is not to the seller i don't have a listing contract with that seller i have a purchase agreement right and I don't want to take your deal. I just pull it off the market. You're talking to me. You're not talking to that seller. So, so let's break it down real quick while we're talking about wholesaling. Explain. Obviously, I'm a wholesaler, so I know what wholesaling is. But explain to the people, the new people out there, ex in your words, exactly what is wholesaling. Well, a, whole, a true wholesale is is simply selling the contract, not the house. And you have to and you have to make sure that that's what you're putting out there so so to get the seller you have to outbound market to them in some way figure out what their stress is there's lots of internal ways meaning online products to be able to find out and find a stressed seller um hasn't paid the taxes the mortgage is backwards uh, code violations water bills all kinds of different ways and uh and so there's different techniques for that marketing you have to have the right message to them to okay. get them to call you Right. So then they, when they call you, you then have an empathetic voice. Well, how can you send me this white postcard? Well, it's because I'm interested in your house. You're looking to sell. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. And so what the, how does it work? And I say, well, what we're going to do is come look at your house. We're going to determine what we can sell it for. If we fix it, I'm going to figure out what it needs to update. And then we're going to you know, give you a fair offer based on the repaired value minus the repairs and then me making some money to feed my family. Mr. Seller, don't you want to feed your family? Yes, I want to feed mine too. That's how I do it. But here's the form, here's how the math works out. Okay? So then after you get a contract, then you go out and market that contract to the investor board. Okay. Well, the proverbial buyer's list, right? That yep. everybody tries to go get first and not the deal. You know, the kind of a side note, you guys that are trying to start off, go find deal. Don't go find buyers. The buyers will come out. If you have a deal, the buyers will find you. It's like the, it's like the chicken or the egg. Right. Buyers, you you will find buyers if it's a good deal, yeah. but you're not going to uh, find sellers 
when you have buyers like that just doesn't happen so at the end of the day you take and you execute that contract you're the buyer yep you then market that contract to a list you can do that on facebook you can reach out to me i got a list you can send it to my list for a fee we all have ways to do it you just call me say maybe i want to buy it but hey ron i got this deal and so and so what do you think and if i'm interested or i know a buyer you yep. know maybe i bring that buyer and we do what you're what you're very good at is jving yes right? Yeah, so JVN is a very is a very bona fide, valid technique of sharing in the wealth instead of hoarding the wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make sure that you have a contract. You know, don't just go out there and throw it into the world and say, I, I got this seller I talked to and he might sell and here's the number. You know, you want to have something that you can actually sell to somebody else. So. And, and and that's a very important thing out there. If you do not have it under contract, you should not be advertising it, period. Now, I have, as a wholesaler, I have a few pocket buyers that I go to. I'm talking to a seller, we're in negotiations, and I send it off to one of my buyers. That's not me marketing it out to the world, that's sending it to a few trusted buyers that I trust not to go behind my back and steal the deal. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I don't recommend that for anybody to do. I always recommend if you're going to put it on, put it in front of a buyer, I uh, have it under contract. I even go so far as to bring buyers with me. Yeah. Those trusted buyers is bring with me on the appointment as a contractor. They zip around through the, the house. Yeah. And then they leave and then they go down the street, do their numbers and text me back the number. And then while I'm standing with the seller, I negotiate it backwards and build my fee into it and buy and sell a house all in the same 10 minutes. <laughs> so I've done that more. And I, I even got one uh, one guy that will actually stand there with me and, and be in the negotiation. And I trust him that he's looking out for me. He's, he's OK with whatever I come up with. So if I come up with a number that may seem to be too high for him, then he's not he's not worried about it. It's just not his number. So then, right. Because I'm looking my my job at the the appointment is to make the deal. Exactly. That's my job, is to get a contract. Yep. And and do that truthfully and with integrity. Tell them what you're gonna do. Tell them that you're a wholesaler and that you you know, you're you're this is what you're gonna do and this is why you do it. Um, you know, if you're not going to close, meaning Mr. Seller, you know, this is how I operate. If I don't find the end buyer, then we'll have to renegotiate. Is that okay with you? Or you can do how I do it is, is, uh, have hard money guys set up and then you can, you can get a better discount if you guarantee the close. In other words, your, right. your spiel to them is to say, Mr. Seller, if you take this deal, I will close, but my main exit is to wholesale this and not me be the buyer yeah so at the closing it may not be me that's signing the papers but the contract that we have is going to be the same number there's no difference because the buyer on this side pays me for bringing the deal to them and when you're up front with that and then when you're calling bringing 10 buyers to the house they don't like what are you doing like why are you calling me to have appointments why are we having an open house on a saturday why are all these contractors coming into my house, right? Yep. And then, then you just, all you do is blow up your deal that way if you're not being, you know, honest with them. And of course, when you pull up to the house as a wholesaler, don't pull up in your Escalade. <laughs> that's don't that's pull up one thing that I don't understand. Like, I, there's a lot of virtual wholesalers out there that, you know, they don't really disclose that they're wholesaling, which is fine. You can do whatever you, you like, but they're, they only can get people in the house a limited number of times before they start asking questions. You so know? to continue down to, you know, the answer to your question is once you find a buyer and you assign it to them, yep. you have a single document that, that takes that purchase agreement, puts the buyer in between you and the seller for a fee. Correct. So so if you buy it for 50 and you're selling it to your guy for 75, the assignment doc says 25,000. Now, how does the buyer know that it's equal to 75? You got to give him the contract. Mm -hmm. so in other words, because he's going to honor all of those terms, which are him paying the closing costs or whatever you negotiated with that seller. 
Okay, so yeah. you so you put in your assignment contract the fee. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't hide anything in regards to the buyer and or so. Yeah, yeah, so I don't hide it, but what I do is is I put the assignment like for instance if we have we, we got under contract for a hundred thousand and we're assigning it uh, for 115. So I actually put in the assignment fee in the assignment I put 115 and then the contract is a hundred and I uh, so the title company just gives me the difference. They do the math. They do. Yeah. yeah. I mean I've 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 never had a buyer bulk at the fee. Because we negotiate because they don't know that number up front. I mean yeah. they don't know what the underlying contract is until it's over. Yeah. So when I always tell them if they start barking and squealing at me, I say, look, you got this is your one shot with me. If you don't want to do this deal, that's fine, but you'll never get another deal from me. I, so, I had one I had one guy actually do that with me and I haven't sold another house. Yeah. I, I don't like yeah, as soon as you start counting my money, right? More than likely, it's not going to happen. And I had a I had a uh, house in West Bloomfield probably six seven years ago that I made ninety thousand on the wholesale deal, and I sent the I sent the purchase agreement and the assignment doc to the guy. He didn't say a word. So yeah. that and now that guy. You know he's a very bona fide buyer so i already knew that he probably wouldn't squawk anyway but he knew not even to not even to jest in it like yeah. just signed it and then that particular he actually wholesaled it again you know we jumped it again <laughs> you know and there was enough room in there right yeah so, you know shame on me in a sense of not getting enough yeah but at the end of the day i'm okay with that so i needed to be just as cordial to him and the fact that he had another buyer that upsold it for another 10, right? He, right. It, and it worked out well. And that, that guy bought lots of houses from me. He's passed away since. Um, Jeff right. Bitwitz, if anybody knows, he uh, he's one of the one of the best guys in town. And he would he was a lender and everything else is one of the, there's a core guys in, in Detroit. And there's probably 10, 12 of us that really kind of play the circle. Tommy Desmond, Tom Arderman, you know, you could go on and on, right? Yeah. So there's a good there's a good set of players that just do we just do what we're supposed to. So now to kind of get down the road is once you get that assignment, you give that to the title company. The title company, you know, knows what to do with it. You need mm -hmm. to find a pretty you need to find a title company that likes assignments because some of them don't. Um, and even some of them have recently have these have decided that they want to disclose to the seller what the fee is before they'll close. And I just say, well, if for some reason the wholesalers or the buyers using that title company, it could be agreed to that. And they do that, then we just don't do it. I'm not going to tell the seller what I'm making. Not on purpose. Right. So at the, at the closing, there's two statements. There's a seller statement and a buyer statement. So neither, they don't cross. No yeah, word. and if you have a good title company, they won't. They yeah. should not, and you should have that um we've had a problem before where uh a title company accidentally showed the buyer statement to the seller and the seller statement to the buyer <laughs> and yeah. it was i mean we, we we got it through it but oh my god yeah yeah typically if i have a seller i think is going to be kind of squirmish i'll actually go to the closing because i don't generally go to the closing if I've it's never i've if, never been to a closing in, in two years i've been doing this you probably should go at least to understand it. So, I've been my, so I've been to my own closing for my own yeah. personal house, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> when I was doing REOs, we used to go to all of them, you know, because the bank, if the bank found out I didn't go to a closing as their agent, that's a problem. Yeah. So I wasn't going to cut off the hand it was feeding me, you know, some, some, when I was doing a lot of business, 05 and 06 it was tough to get there reclosing because sometimes we'd have multiples in a day so i just started sending staff but my point being is there's no reason for you as a wholesaler if you're jumping jumping the contract there's no reason for you to go right unless you think that the seller just you know it's a rapport building thing too you know you you know as a because it's, it's not like a realtor it's not like you're bringing them a gift right yeah. right like a realtor might do and you're just there to 
if you're there is to support the title girl, you know, trying to, because sometimes there's an, an explanation and I have a very good assistant that uh, that is in total communication with the seller yep. right up to the closing. And generally I'll call her and not me to kind of get clarification. So I'm, she's a good buffer for me. And then of course, if there's some money issue with that, that has to be decided, then of course my assistant texts me and asks me the question um, kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, Nicole Tender said, hey guys, how's it going? How's it going, Nicole? 